Okay, everybody, so I'm going to show you how to put the forged rod in the uh, Viterra piston together without a machine press because most people go to the machine shop to get it done and install piston rings in the correct orientation. As you can see, this is a factory P2E Y7 piston. They have normal bolts. These actually are, or these are nuts. These are the bolts, the ARP bolts. Um, I'm not going to take those apart right now. They're in there pretty tight, so I'm not worried about it. But on these, you can see that there are really close. You can see there's a number, number two. Um, that's important to pay attention to. These also have numbers. Kind of also hard to see, but they, uh, this one says 0104. That doesn't matter, but when you put them in, you got to make sure the numbers are facing the same direction because these face the back side of the motor. When it's upside down, that can throw you off a little bit, but just know these always face where the drain plug faces. Okay, now that we got that figured out, you want to make sure the arrow is on the right way so that these face towards the timing belt. So you'll want this arrow faced like, like that. So now that we got that as a representation, we'll put that off to the side. Now what you're gonna do, this is Lucas Assembly Lube. It works pretty well. You're just gonna put a little bit inside. If we can get some come out. Just a little, just a dab on both both journals inside. Mix it up a little. Get it nice and well lubricated. And the pin. Make sure the pin has um, assembly lube on it also. Very important. Don't lube the piston rings ever. Because if you do, you'll car will smoke for the entire life until you pull it apart again. I found this out the hard way. Um, a little inside the actual rod journal up top. Make sure it's lubricated. Alright, numbers are facing towards you guys, and the arrow is facing towards my car. So that's that's the right way. Then you're gonna want to put this pin in there. You might wiggle it around a little bit. Sometimes they don't like to go right in. And if you have to, you get this hammer. You gotta tap it a little bit so that it gets in there a little. Might take a few times. Okay, it's starting to work its way in. Okay, might have to tap that out a little now. I always use an extension. It fits in there pretty well. That'll help tap it out. A little lube again. Make sure it's all facing the right way. Stick it over. As you can see, it's just barely on there. And tap. You see how it's, how it's working itself in now. we're almost there but as you can see there's a little spot for a snap ring like this this will fit in there before you get too far go ahead and put your snap ring in I don't have the snap ring tool right now like I said in the previous video um, we are working on a budget but we will have one soon it's not very much just we've had more important things to buy at the moment but I just use a screwdriver snaps right in now that you got the snap ring in you can you can finish beating this through that's its limit and then drop the other snap ring put this other snap ring in Right. It'll make this noise 
on startup and it'll sound like you have a rod knock immediately, don't freak out, don't throw stuff, don't get mad. Once they warm up, they quiet down. But see, this is a floating wrist pin, so it'll float like that for a little bit. Call a wrist pin slap, piston slap, whatever. That's that's what that noise is. It'll warm up, and the oil will circulate, and it'll get quiet. I promise. Freaked me out the first time I heard it. Well, there's that. Now for the piston ring install. I'm only going to do one, so when I assemble the motor, you can actually... Uh, see how fast it'll go like I'll put the do this one right now and then when I have the assembly of the motor video I'll put this in it also um, so if you're watching the assembly of the motor video then you have nothing to worry about but look forward to an assembly of the motor video you will have all these I'll throw them on and after you see this all the other ones will already be done because I'll do them after this video because I'm just not gonna waste your time I'm trying to work smart here okay You've got a couple sizes. You got a thicker size and a medium size. And if you look right here, the thicker one goes in the middle or on the ground, whichever one you prefer. This top one is a little bit thinner and has a very very close clearance. Thanks. And on the middle one, which is actually one of your compression rings, you're gonna want this, there's a, look really closely, there's a beveled edge up top. You want that up top, you don't want it on the bottom like that. You want it up top. Took me a while to figure this out too. Um, on this one, what we'll do, there's no, there's no beveled edge, it's just a straight cut. What you'll do is you'll stick one end on the inside and slowly work your way around it, just like that. It's not too hard. Almost anybody could do it. Um, these were already filed, so you don't have to worry about doing that because this is off my old setup. But keep doing the same thing all the way through them. It can be fun at times, but since these ones are already ready, I think they tend to go pretty quick. And on the lower ones, I actually prefer going through the bottom Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. You'll put this uh, gold ring on the very bottom. That is your oil scraper. It scrapes the oil off your cylinder walls. Um, it is your oil ring, essentially. You don't want to forget this one because this is the most important one out of them all. Your compression's a pretty important one too, but um, you'll smoke really bad if you screw this up. Of course, these two little ones are pretty easy to do. Slide them on also. They go on just, just real easy. Um, one goes on the bottom. We'll get a close-up video after I'm completely finished with this. One there goes on the bottom. And then the other one goes on the top half. While the gold piece stays in the middle. I'm trying to make this video sweet and to the point. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but it's not too hard to do piston rings. Sometimes you will break them and get pretty mad and have to order new ones. Done that before. I uh, wasn't happy at all. But, you live and you learn. It's trial and error, really. You just don't want to stretch the rings too far. That's the common mistake. Because if not, you'll if you do that, you will be buying new rings, I promise. Um, they're not expensive, it's just the fact that you have to buy new ones. Okay, now you'll see the ha they have gaps here. And what you'll want to pay attention to is these gaps right there. You don't want them like that. Why? Because oil will shoot right past them, right here, and then your car will start smoking like a freight train. So you want to stagger them. One over here one off to the other side, 180 off basically on each one along with this, the lower ones see there's a gap here, so that's right here, that one's there, that one's there now you'll want this one exactly on the other side, basically you're gonna make a cross and once it's on the other side you're basically good to go now what you'll do when you install these into the motor is you'll put 10W30, 5W30, it really doesn't matter um, motor oil, not assembly lube. 
put it on the inside of the cylinders, put it on this, and put it on the actual piston ring compressor, and carefully compress these rings, and then you'll tap them in with this facing the timing belt. So you're looking at it from where the intake manifold would be sitting. That's what it would look like. From where you're standing in front of the car at the bumper, you're looking at it to the right. The arrow will be facing to your right. Um, like I said, make sure those are facing the right direction. When you pull, put everything in, you'll just have to be very careful doing so. But you'll, you, I've seen people break these rings while putting them in. I haven't done it yet, but I've came close, I'm sure. But um, yeah, that's basically all it is to assemble a forged rod. And on my other rods, it's actually easier to push this one in. I think this was the hardest pin to push in. So I gave you the hardest one, which I guess could be a good thing. Basically just tap them lightly with assembly lube on them, motor oil, whatever you can find. Um, I strongly recommend Lucas assembly lube. This stuff is awesome. I put it on my camshafts. I put it on basically anything that rotates that doesn't need a light coat of oil. I put it on all my bearings, main bearings, rod bearings. I put some inside my oil pump to lubricate the oil pump pre-start. And it stays in there, which is wonderful because Lucas saves motors. But here's the difference between a factory rod and why you can't push a lot of boost and power and a forged rod, why you can push a lot of boost and power. Obvious reasons, right when you see it, is because the H-beam rod here has a lot more uh, metal, so it doesn't collapse as easy. These, they break like pencils. If I was Hulk strength right now, I'm pretty sure I could just snap this thing in half, like no problem. This one would take me a little bit longer. And they, these H-beams will have to have the block notched, and the main girdle, which is the main cap cover, it will have to be notched down too because these stick out a lot farther. If you compare them, these stick up a little bit higher, and the hump's a little bit higher, so these actually tend to hit the, um, hit the main cap. But... When you get these all in, this compression will be around 8 to 8 to 1, depending on the cylinder head setup. You're going to want to run a lot of boost with a really good tune. Um, if these were a little bit higher compression pistons, we could get away with really low boost and a good tune and make more power. But I'm happy with them. And one thing to do when you get these from eBay, it is the most crucial thing. This is why everyone talks crap on eBay. Make sure to go get these rods straight out of the box make sure to go get them um, checked at the machine shop to being out of round because as you can see they're dark i started a rod knock after putting them in and i couldn't figure out why the machine shop actually said the specs weren't right so they had to resize them right out of the box it's the only problem i ever had with them and after they got resized they ran crisp no problems ran 13 sevens on 13 pounds of boost 13 seven one nine High elevation, 103 degrees outside, 230 plus degrees engine temperature after peak runs is bad. And I still ran good numbers. Had a factory head, completely stock everything else. Um, the only thing that was forged in racing was the turbo and the rods and the ECU tube. But you can make good power out of little money with Hondas, so I suggest you go get yourself some Eagle rods. Well, these are Godspeed, but Eagle and Godspeed, they're basically the same. You don't believe me, buy both sets and make a video about it because I'm telling you, you'll be sh shocked. This just doesn't have the stamp on it. The quality is the same other than I had to get these resized out of the box. Eagle, most likely, you don't have to. But it's always good to check anyways because machine shops do make mistakes too. So, all right, that's it for this video. Um, Stay tuned for the next video or the engine rebuild or assembly video. So, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share.